Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for October 19th, 2022. I'm teaching a series entitled Pursuing Grace-Based Success. Do you want to be a success where you tuned into the right place? We're going to learn how to be a success God's way. In this series, we're already a month into it. This is uh, part 23 today, but we're learning how to be a success God's way. Put this in the chat. Say, I am a success. I am success going somewhere to succeed. I'm a success because I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will go where God leads me to go. I will do what God tells me to do when I get there. My life is all about him. My life is not about me. I'm not living my life on my own terms. Jesus is my Lord. Put that in the chat. Jesus is my Lord because he's my Lord. He is Lord of all. Because if he's not Lord, Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. He is the captain of my ship. He is chart. I'm being led by your spirit. I am submitted to the Holy Spirit in all things at all times. I'm not living my life based on me. My life is all about him. Say amen to that. When you live like that, you are going to have and enjoy life. You will experience success because it will be the life that God called you to live. You ready? So this is pursuing grace, grace-based success. Part 23, and the title of today's message is Enjoying Your Lot in Life. Put this in the chat and say it out loud. I enjoy my lot in life. I enjoy, I have it and I enjoy it. Get ready for it. I enjoy my lot in life. We're going to talk about it this morning. I thank God for you. I appreciate you. I see all the stuff that's going on in the chat. People are declaring it, that you enjoy your lot in life. That's the key, is having, understanding your divine purpose and enjoying your lot in life. So let's talk about it. We've been looking at some foundational scriptures. We'll get through those and get to what God wants me to share with you this morning. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 10, the Bible says, I mean that you are saved by grace. All you did was believe. You didn't save yourself. It was a gift from God. Eternal life is a gift from God and all you do is receive it and you can't take credit for receiving a gift. All you did was receive it. So you're not saved by the things that you have done. You have nothing to boast about. Verse 10 says, God made you a new creation in Christ Jesus so that you could spend the remainder of your days doing the good works that God had before ordained for us to do. So there are some good works that you are supposed to be doing, but you're not doing the works to be saved. You're doing the works because you're saved. Say, I have work to do. I have work to do. You have work to do. And we're going to be doing that work until the day we die. We're going to, there's no retirement plan for the believer when it comes to your work, your, your purpose. You may retire from a job, but you cannot retire from your work. I have work to do. You have work to do. First Corinthians chapter one, verses 30 and 31. The Bible says, God has united you with Christ Jesus. Now for our benefit, God made him Christ Jesus to become wisdom itself. And the father made us right with him because of Jesus. So because of Jesus, we have access to wisdom. Because of Jesus, we are declared righteous. And then the text says that because of Jesus, God made us pure and holy and freed us from sin. So all of that is because of Jesus and not because of us. Verse 31 says, therefore, we have nothing to boast about. What am I going to boast about? It's all about him. It's not about me. And 2 Timothy 1 and 9 says, God saved us and called us. So God saved us and called us What? with what? a holy calling so that our life could be about something that's bigger than just us. God saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace. He gave me a purpose and the grace for the purpose. He gave me an assignment, the grace for the assignment. He gave me both in Christ Jesus. He gave me both in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Third John 2 says, beloved, I pray that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So Your legs will never take you where your soul has never been. You will never have life prosperity until you have soul prosperity. And then finally, Ecclesiastes chapter five, we've been looking at this passage for a while. It is so good. Let me read it to you. Solomon, the richest man on the planet said, even so is one thing I've noticed that's good. Just one thing is good for people to eat and drink and enjoy their work under the sun during the short life that God has given them and to accept their lot in life. And it is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. Say, it's okay. It's it's a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it, to enjoy your work. 
and accept your lot in life. Ooh, say that, put that in the chat. I enjoy my work and I accept my lot in life. I enjoy my work and I accept my lot in life. The, the, the text says, this is indeed a gift from God. It's a gift when I enjoy my work and when I accept my lot in life. And the Bible says, God keeps such people so busy enjoying life that they have no time to brood over the past. You got people that are coming to you. They want to talk about, well, last year you said, well, you know, what about this? What? If, listen, stop. I don't have time for that. Listen, I love you. I appreciate you. If you want to have a relationship with me, we got to be forward ever, back whenever. The best is yet to come. Man, greater is coming for me. How about we move forward and not backward? How, how about, I, you know, if I walk with you if you're ready to move forward. Why? Because I have no time to brood over the past. God keeps such people so busy enjoying life that they have no time to brood over the past. The people that are brooding over the past, they get frustrated with you because here you are enjoying life and your confidence and your enjoyment, it irritates their insecurities. And so what we do is we pray for them, but we keep stepping. Say amen to that. So what does this mean for you today? Well, I have four things to share with you this morning. Uh, three of them were, are, is directly related to what I'm talking about, but the Lord wanted me to insert this first one real quick because this is a continuation from yesterday. I wanted to share this yesterday, but I had too much. And the Lord said, well, start off with this because it's still good. I need to address this and then I'm gonna get to the other three things. So I have four things to share with you on this morning. Well, here's the first thing. This is like what God wanted me to share with you yesterday, but I just didn't share it for the sake of time. God's answer to poverty is the word of God, not money. I actually talk, what I'm about to read to you right now is an excerpt from my book, Level Up Your Life. And if you don't have the book, just get it. Go check it out. It's on Amazon. Go to rickpina.co. But I'm about to read to you an excerpt from the book. And the reason why I'm addressing this here, because it's hard to accept your lot in life and enjoy life if you're struggling to make ends meet. So you got to get the word down inside of you. And the, it's the word of God that will deliver you from a poverty mindset. Isabella and I had a poverty mindset when we came to God. Uh, we had the fear of running out and not faith in running over. And even though we were tithing and we were giving and we were sowing, we were living with a poverty mindset. And that poverty mindset was keeping us, it was holding us back. And it's it's hard to open up your, you can't open up your heart fully to the grace of God and to what God wants to do in your life if you have a poverty mindset. So the answer to poverty is the word of God and not money. Let me read to you what, uh, the, what I wrote in my book concerning this. The real answer to poverty is not money. The answer to poverty is the word of God. It is developing a prosperous soul. In Luke chapter seven, John the Baptist, Jesus's cousin, found himself in jail. He was upset that Jesus was not coming to get him. So he sent his disciples to go and ask his cousin this question. Are you the Messiah that we've been ex expecting or should we keep looking for someone else? Now, this is obviously a question birthed out of frustration because John the Baptist knew exactly who Jesus was. But look at Jesus's response. Jesus said, go back and tell my cousin, tell him what you have seen and what you have heard. He said, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cured, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised to life. Finally, he said, and the gospel, the good news is being preached to the poor. So let me break down what Jesus said. Jesus always ministered to the answers of life's problems. So Jesus ministered. What did Jesus minister to the blind? The ability to see. What did Jesus minister to the lame? The ability to walk. What did Jesus minister to lepers? Clean skin. What did Jesus minister to the deaf? The ability to hear. What did Jesus minister to the dead? resurrection life. Lastly, what did Jesus minister to the poor? Your first response may be to think that he gave them money, but Jesus never gave the poor any money. Jesus ministered to their needs, but he did not give them money. The Bible says Jesus gave them the word. Jesus said the good news is being preached to the poor, not money. So if you give a poor person money, you can meet their immediate need. But if you don't change the content and the condition of their heart, they're going to need a handout the next day. Jesus's answer to poverty is the word of God. If we can get the word down inside of a person, then and they can discover their divine purpose, 
their purpose and the word and God's grace will lead them out of poverty. So that's in my book, Level Up Your Life. Um, anyway, get the book if you don't have it. So I needed to share that up front because the answer to poverty is the word. Listen, Isabella and I, we love going out. We hand out uh, backpacks and school supplies. We hand out food. We go and you know we just tell them, hey, Jesus loves you and all of that. We're just there to kind of share the love of God. We do that. Like, you know, we have no problem with doing that. But unless we get, this is why our school in the Dominican Republic is a Christ-based school. This is why we have a church connected to the school. Because while we're giving these kids a hot meal every day and we're, while we're teaching them how to read and write, and arithmetic, we're also teaching them about Jesus. And we're getting the word down inside of them because it is the word of God that's going to get you out of poverty. Say amen to that. All right, number two. Here we go. Number two, when you when your work aligns with your purpose, you sincerely enjoy it. Put this in the chat. I enjoy what I do. When, you, when your work is aligned with your purpose, you sincerely enjoy it. Now, there are people that do not like their work because they're working on things that do not align with their divine purpose. So if you're called to do one thing, and you know you're called to do this, but you're spending 40 hours a week or more doing something else, then it's hard to find a sense of purpose in what you're doing. As a result, what's going to happen is you're going to feel like, hey, I'm called to do this, but I'm spending 40 hours a week doing this. You're going to feel like you're wasting your life. You're going to you're going to feel like you are wasting away while you're at work. So if you pursue a job or a career for money instead of your divine assignment or your purpose, you may make lots of money, but you will you may be miserable in the process. And so at the end of the day, you what you want to do is be able to work and enjoy. You want to go to work and whistle while you work. Why? Because you know that you are working under the grace of God in your divine assignment. In 2013, a Gallup poll said 70%, 70% of Americans hate their jobs. This was 2013. This was almost 10 years ago, but it's probably somewhat the same today. 70% of Americans back then said they hate their jobs. Why? Because they're not walking in accordance with their purpose. What they're doing is that they're, they're working on something that they feel like they're just wasting their time. So when your work aligns with your purpose, watch this, you get a sense of fulfillment. Put this in the chat. Say, I am fulfilled. You get a sense of fulfillment that makes you want to go to work. Listen, I don't get paid to do today's work. When Isabella and I, we go, everything that we do for Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries, we don't take any money. So, so, so like, for example, I'm about to go preach in Texas. I'm about to go preach in Georgia. While, when I go minister, where, wherever I go, they write us a check. Hey, thanks for coming. You know, they cover your expenses. They write us a check. That check goes to Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries. Thankfully for us, we're in a position to where, where we're able to do that, right? So here's my point, though. So why do I do it? I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it because I have a fulfillment. I'm doing it because it's part of my purpose. I'm doing it. I come down here and I do today's word. Why am I doing this? Why? Because I get fulfilled. I get a level of fulfillment and enjoyment when I'm doing what God has called me to do. See, remember you, I, the difference I told you before in this series, the difference between a job and work. You can have a job that doesn't align with your purpose if you just need to do it for a little season or whatever. You need to generate some income, but but you have work to do and your divine work. God gave Adam work before he gave him a wife. And so you are going to have work to do. And so, so at the end of the day, you have work that's going to be uh, uh, your assignment for the for the remainder of your days. You you can retire from a job. You can't retire from your work. So you have work to do. That's Ephesians 2 and 10. And you got to get to work. And when you're doing the work that God has called you to do, man, you will enjoy it. When you know that now, if let me say this, if you can do what God has called you to do and you're getting a, a level of fulfillment from that and you can make money from it. Let's say you have a business or you have a, a, a position, employment, that lines up with your purpose. So you're actually getting paid or you're generating money like you're running a business and you're doing that and it lines up with what God has called you to do, psh, even better. So now like you're, 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 you're able to earn the income, but at the same time, get fulfillment, divine fulfillment, even better. When, when, when that lines up, watch this, you are so fulfilled. When, when that lines up, you go to work and you feel amazed. Like you tell your wife, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe I get paid to do this. Oh, 
I get, like, you know what I'm saying? Why? Because you're doing what you love. Yeah, like you are actually getting paid to do something and you feel like it's ministry. Like, like you might be working for the government. You might be working for this other position. You might be working for whoever, but you feel I, like what I do is ministry and you're at work and you're pouring into others and you're at work and you go to a conference and you're speaking and you're pouring into others and people come up to you and you're ministering to them and you're like, oh my God, and I get paid to do this? This is crazy. Why? Because you are doing, it becomes a labor of love. You have work to do, but it's amazing when your work aligns with your purpose. Say amen to that. I'm talking about having and enjoying life. I'm talking about how to be successful. This is success in life. Number three, when you accept your lot in life, here's a big one, big one, super duper big one. You free yourself from the endless comparisons that lead to frustration. You free yourself. Listen, put this in the chat. I compare myself to no one. You, you, you free yourself from the endless comparisons that lead to frustration. You need to stop comparing yourself to other people. If the grass looks greener on the other side, here's the problem. If the grass looks greener on the other side than the side that you're on right now, as soon as you get over there, then the grass is going to look greener on the other side again. The problem is not with the grass. The problem is with the lens. The problem is with you. So if you're not if you're not happy with what you have and where you are, and you're always looking at the lives of other people and comparing yourself to other people, then listen, you're always going to be frustrated. True success and happiness are treasures. And these treasures are unlocked when you stop attempting to be someone else and you embrace the grace to be you. Put this in the chat. I embrace the grace to be me. See, you are only. I am only grace to be me. I run my race with my grace at my pace. And so I have the grace to be me. I'm not comparing myself to anybody else. I am Rick Pina and I'm really good at being Rick Pina and I'm not trying to be anybody else. And so, so uh, I, I'm just me. I, I'm free to be me. I, I enjoy being me I, and, and I'm good at being me. And so when you know that who you are and you're not comparing yourself to anyone else and you embrace the grace to be the person that you are called to be, man, you will unlock the treasures of happiness and success and peace and love and joy. When you find your divine purpose, your lot in life, and you accept it, you are in a position to tap into the grace of God to be the person that God destined, designed, and currently desires for you to be. God destined, he designed, and he still desires for you to be somebody. When you start living as that person and you are like, I'm free to be that person. I am who God says I am. I, I can do what God says I can do. I'm free to be me. I, I don't watch this. I'm not, I'm free. I'm not, I'm not even concerned with the, with the concerns of other people. Their poison cannot stop my purpose. They, they cannot define me because they did not design me. And so, so I am walking out my divine purpose because I know that my God called, he called me for such a time as this. He gave me the purpose and the grace for the purpose. He gave me the assignment and the grace for the assignment. He gave me both in Christ Jesus before the world began. So you have to run your race at your pace. If you ever get caught up coveting what God is doing in someone else, if you ever get caught up saying, well, God, why don't you do it for me? Like, you know, uh, God, well, you're doing it for her. You can do it for me. You're doing it for her. You can do it for me. You can do it for him. Why don't you do it for me? If you ever get frustrated like that, listen, it's going to be very frustrating for a long time because you're going to be making a demand on God for something that's not yours. Frustration sets in when you make a demand on God for something that's not yours. Let me, let me make sure that you understand what I'm saying. Everything, look at me, everything you need to accomplish your divine assignment. Everything you need to accomplish your divine assignment has already been stored up for you, right? So God sent you to this planet. God deployed you to this planet at just the right time. And when he sent you to this planet, he sent you with a divine purpose. And everything you need for that divine purpose, who you need to connect with, He'll, he'll bring you in front of the right people at just the right time. He will release all the resources that you need to accomplish your divine assignment. He's given you the grace to operate in the level of wisdom that's required for you to do what it, whatever it is that you're called to do. So whatever you need to accomplish your divine purpose has already been stored up for you. And what God is doing now is he's preparing you for what he already prepared for you. And he will release these things at just the right time. However, if you pursue the wrong things, like if all of this is what God stored up for me, but I'm looking at Jim over there and I'm so caught up with Jim's life that I start praying for stuff that God is doing in Jim's life. Now I'm making a demand 
over here for things that are not mine. And since I'm making a demand for things that God sort of for Jim and not for me, then, then I'm over here. I can fast. I can pray. I can fast till I starve. But I can't make God give me something that he didn't already give me from the foundations of the world. So now I'm making a demand and then I'm going to get frustrated because I'm so focused on Jim's life that I can't live mine. And so, so, so now I'm making a demand and I'm like, God, why are you not doing this for me? And God is like, I never called you to be Jim. I called you to be Rick. And so when I come over here and I accept my lot in life and I stop comparing myself to other people, then I know that what God has for me is for me. Put that in the chat. What God has for me is for me. And I know without a doubt, come on now. So now I can make a demand on things that are mine and God will release those things for me at just the right time. Say amen, amen to that. So you got to stop comparing yourself to other people. You, you, you Listen, you only have the grace to be you. Now, when you embrace the grace to be you, you will be so free. I just had a conversation with somebody about this this very same point that I'm about to make. You will be so free that you will actually be able to genuinely celebrate the diversities of giftings and callings without jealousy. You will be so free being yourself that when, when God does something for somebody else, and it might even be something that you want, it might even be something that you're waiting on. Like it might even be something that's yours, but it's just not the right time yet. And when you see God do it for them, you are so free being yourself that you can actually celebrate them genuinely, like with a pure heart and clean hands. Girl, I'm happy for you. Hey, man of God, I'm happy for you. And you can celebrate. Ooh, I felt the presence of God on that point. You can celebrate the diversities of giftings and callings without jealousy. You could be genuinely happy for other people because you know that has nothing to do with you. Like, like your assignment is over here and you're going to run your race and you're going to be good anyway. And so you over here, you can celebrate people. You can build them up and not tear them down. You don't have any competitive jealousy. You don't, you don't covet anything. Like glory to God, this is how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be here to build each other up and not tear each other down. This is how we enjoy our lot in life. You got it? Oh, I'm teaching better than you're saying amen. I told you, this is going to be a good message right here. All right, number four is the last point, and then I'll let you go. Man, this is so good. Uh, number four, life is lived as a gift. Put this in the chat. My life is a gift. My life, life is lived as a gift. My life is a gift. When you accept your lot in life and you enjoy your work. When you accept your lot in life, when you enjoy your work, man, life is a gift. Life is, 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 is truly a blessing. When you discover Jesus, you get to discover yourself. And when you discover yourself, you get to discover your purpose. And when you discover your purpose, you will discover your peace. And when you get, when you know who you are, you're in Christ Jesus, you have peace. It, it frees you from wasting valuable time and energy and effort trying to be someone else. See, knowing who you are and knowing what you were born to do, it frees you from wasting time, energy, and effort working on the wrong thing. Being successful at something that you're not supposed to do is not a success. If you get to heaven and you say, oh God, look, look at all the accolades I got. Look at all the positions I got. Look at all the money I made. But God says, yeah, but I called you to do this. No, but God, look, I was really good at doing this. But yeah, but you were not supposed to be doing that. You cannot be a success at something that you were not supposed to be doing. <laughs> so God is gonna measure you against your divine purpose. But as I close, when you know who you are and when you love what you do, every day is a gift from God. That's my testimony. I see a lot of people in the chat. You're saying that's your testimony as well. When you know who you are, you know what you're called to do. Life is a gift. Life is a gift for me. I enjoy being me. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. And I pray that you see, here's the thing. What I'm saying right now, if you know who you are and you know what God called you to do, then when, when I get so excited about being me, then you would be like, man, that's good, Rick. And then it will cause you to, to, it will ignite something in you to celebrate your own self. But if you are insecure, it will bother you that I'm secure in being me. You see what I'm saying? Your confidence will irritate the insecurities of insecure people. And you can't, all you can do for them is pray for them. You only have the grace to be you. Don't even worry about, look, at the end of the day, some people will despise you for being you. Some people will despise you because you're so happy that you're running your race, but they're, they will despise you because of their own insecurities. It has nothing to do with you. Just pray for them and keep stepping.
Amen. All right, let's close this message out. Oh, this was good. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about grace-based success. I declare what your word decrees to enjoy your work and to accept your lot in life. This is indeed a gift from God. That's the story of my life. I have accepted Jesus. I have found myself in him. I know who I am. I accept my assignment and I don't waste time attempting to be anybody else. I don't waste effort pursuing money, doing things that don't align with my purpose. I align my perspective of myself and the effort of my work with my divine purpose. This keeps me happy and this keeps me productive. I get to do what I love and I sincerely enjoy it. Since I am doing what you birthed me to do, you open doors for me that no man can close. You close doors for me that no man can open. And since I live to fulfill your kingdom plans and purposes, I get to live my life as a gift. I enjoy every day. I am at peace with who I am and who, with who I'm not. I am at peace with what I'm called to do and also with what I'm not called to do. So I embrace your grace to run my race and enjoy every step of the way. I enter this day happy, content, excited, and thankful. Greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Tomorrow, I'm going to have another one. But this was so good today. Oh, my God. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages and you don't get my notes, I'm giving my notes away every day for free. That's crazy. Sign up. Go to todaysword.org. Click on the big red subscribe button and put your email address there. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox on a daily basis and you will get them for free. I want you to do me a favor. Two things. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. And also, I like to read those comments. And then number two, share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Greater is coming for me. Greater is coming for you. The best is yet to come. Enjoy your lot in life. Have a blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to learn more about our ministry or you would like to partner with our ministry, please visit ripministries.org. You will learn there what we're doing in the Caribbean, providing a Christ-based education to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic. We also provide them a hot meal every day. If you would like to partner with us, click on the donate button. All the donations are tax deductible in the United States. If you don't have my book, Level Up Your Life, go to rickpina.co and get the book today. From rickpina.co, you'll also see that I have journals and I also have some other products and apparel and etc. all centered around the grace life. And then lastly, if you enjoy this content, but you want direct access to Isabella and I, the Lord impressed it upon my heart for Isabella and I to start mentoring people, giving people access to us to be able to ask us questions. We're answering questions about ministry, about missions, nonprofit, for-profit. I'm addressing things uh, as far as how I preach, our approach to preaching. We're putting out private content just for a specific group in the Patreon. So please visit patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina if you're interested in this material. Have an amazing day.